All right, y'all. So we're back with another one of these interrogations where the suspect thinks he can outsmart the police. Let's check this one out. The killer claims to have an IQ of over 150. If I'm chipping away at that timeline, it can be exculpatory for you, meaning that it excludes you as a suspect. I know my vernacular is very good, so <laughs> you don't have to explain your words to me. Little does he know, he's about to show a not the vernacular, not the vernacular, is spectacular, huh? <laughs> exactly what you shouldn't do in a police interrogation. Uh, I wasn't in the car when I went to the Starbucks. Did you lie to me? I didn't, I didn't get you on that one. I feel like I got you. On the 17th of February, 2019, David Wright and his friend Christopher headed to a drug deal on a street corner at 3.40 a.m. Except this was no ordinary drug deal. It was actually a setup for a robbery on both sides. David demanded his buyers hand over their belongings, to which they responded by pepper spraying Chris and running. Seconds later, David drew a revolver from his waist and fired a single shot into Raul Quadros' chest, killing him instantly. David and Chris fled the scene and buried the revolver in a field, and went about their nights confident there was no way they could be caught. But unfortunately, they were almost immediately identified through multiple cameras around the area. I was, I was about to say, did you have a cell phone on you? Because how many times we done seen that in these cases, bro? They always ping their cell phone and it leads them right to where they've been. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't think they, 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 they forget about that cell phone being used as like a tracking device everything went down in. David was brought in two days later, but still believed the cops would never find him guilty, and that his extraordinary intellect would carry him through the case. How wrong he was. So, like I said, I mean, it's already been in the media. Four people have been arrested. It's not like we don't know what happened to some extent, you know, but there's always more that we don't know from every single party, right? Everybody has a little piece of the puzzle. We don't necessarily get the truth from everybody. So I would like to hear from you what happens. No, I have no clue because I, I'm just now hearing about this. So, I mean, the whole, I don't know what you're talking about, is kind of out the door at this point. I got several people who have already identified you. You're identified on video. So it's not a question of that you were there. It's more a question of, what led up to this? Because I don't think this is what was actually supposed to happen, right? So you're just gonna play that that you have no idea what happened because you weren't there. Uh, I was not. No. Not only was David identified by multiple people through CCTV footage, but he also had no alibi, and Facebook mm. messages were recovered discussing details of the alleged drug deal. David was there at the time of the murder. The detective is just trying to uncover the details of exactly what happened. And I didn't even think about that, bro. The cell phone where you set up the transaction, <laughs> they got the messages for him. <laughs> and they... <laughs> You caught, bro. You caught. But he trying to hold out. So let's see what he do. Let's see how he'll hold up. And why. But David is having none of it and has a plan to outplay the detectives. It's not helpful to you, really, to just be quiet and not say anything. Because what I have are people who are looking out for themselves because they don't want to catch charge. So they're going to dime you off. They're not and looking out for you. So you believe somebody that's going to tell you that somebody else did something to save their own ass? Well, with all the additional evidence, yes. I've been out of jail for all of a week and a half. I've spent almost every minute of it with my girlfriend. As for, did I plan to kill anybody? Did I kill anybody? No, I didn't. So when I look at the GPS on your phone, it's not going to tell me that... It's going to tell me that you Told were your girlfriend the whole time. That you never were, were over a Jack in the Box. You should. And the only reason you might tell me that is because maybe you didn't take your phone. Or maybe somebody else had my phone. It's been known to happen quite often, actually. My phone has been... It's been known to happen quite often. You've only been out a week, you just said. Fam, and that's another thing. You've been out a week and this happened, bro? That has got to be one of the shortest times in history to be released from jail just to turn around and go right back. Why even be released then? You should have just stayed. I left it in one person's car and it took me a day and a half to get it back. When was that? Uh, that was earlier in the week, and then I let somebody use my phone. They were supposed to just go to 7-Eleven to go meet somebody that was selling something to an offer up. And they had apparently seven or eight things that they had to do between then and when they got back to the house. So what day was that? I don't remember. 
<laughs> and who was that? That was a guy that goes by Memphis. It's a nickname. I think his uh, first name is Joe. Black guy. David's only current alibi and defense is that maybe somebody else had his phone really? and was at the drug deal instead. He also backs really? up his story by saying he doesn't remember exactly which day everything occurred on, something that can't directly be proven or disproven. However, for this to be true, that person with his phone would also have to dress exactly the same as David, have access to his Facebook account, and according to his own description of the perp, change the color of his skin. Yeah, for him to be, quote unquote, have this high IQ and be smart, he was dumb right there. Cause that question there just makes you look like a liar because now when they show see you on tape and you're saying it was somebody else, but it was you, uh, everything, fa uh, everything falls out the window now, bro, for you. <laughs> it's not looking too likely. You know why you're hearing what's going on. I mean, at this point, you're literally the last person we talked to. And the only person that has a, an allegiance to you is Chris. I mean, obviously people are not going to be shy about telling us who was there and who did what. And plus, we have video. There's video at the Chevron. There's video at the Shell. You know that we have all your co-suspects under arrest. All I want from you is a reason. I understand what happened. I just need to know why. The only person I know you have under arrest is Chris. Okay. We have Cody under arrest. And we have Tannehill. What's his name? Ray. Ray. He's in custody as well. We have his car, the car that was used, the car that was at Chevron in our impound. They are all under arrest. Chris is under arrest because we viewed messages on the phones that organized picking you up. Those same messages from you to Cody. We have them on their phone. We've already viewed them. We have the Facebook communications between mm. Chris and Brianna setting up the deal that happened where you guys showed up at the Chevron and walked down. This is how this plays out. Your girlfriend's going to be dumb enough to provide you an alibi on a murder charge. And then she's going to get roped up in a murder as an accessory. If you care about that person, you have just set her up for failure. And if you want your girlfriend jammed up because you just set her up for it, then that's your choice. No, you can't threaten me with jamming her up. It's not because. a threat, man. I'm just telling you how it plays out. Like, I'm going to go talk to her, and she's going to be dumb enough to lie for you. When I got video evidence that she, you weren't with her. Like, dude, dude, I get it. Like, you had a quick come up, right? I, I get it. I don't, I don't think you were a stone cold killer. I don't. Like, if you accidentally shot the dude because you flinched or you got scared because of something he did, now is the time. If you come up with that stuff later, nobody is gonna believe a word you say. Ladies, this is a perfect example right here of you choosing the right dude to be with, right? If he doesn't, for the sake of her, not getting her jammed up, confess right now and say, all right, I was there, this is what happened, to let her off, then that's super foul to get her dragged up into this too, man because she's trying to be loyal to you. Like, that's super fun. Like, ladies, you gotta know. <laughs> you gotta know who you dealing with. A lot of these people don't care nothing about you. That goes for ladies and men. They don't care nothing about you and they'll let you get hung up right along with them. Right along with them. Well, somebody accidentally shoot somebody. Because if your finger's on the trigger, it's called a sympathetic reflex. It happens to police officers all the time. I think that's a term that's been come up with just to cover their asses for shooting people. Well, you can try to make it about that. I'm talking about you. I wouldn't know. Never shot anybody. There is a lot of merit for staying silent in an interrogation like this. In fact... And just like that, he's going to get her jammed up. In most cases, it's usually the best course of action, coupled with asking for a lawyer as soon as possible. But here, David is trying to outright deny any association with the case, even though he's been directly linked to it through multiple sources. All he's doing now is making it worse on himself and those around him. But his ego is telling him otherwise. Where do I go from here? And you're the police officer, reverse role. You're, you're the cop. You're sitting over here trying to figure out if this dude has any remorse for what he did or if he's just worried about getting in trouble. 
How would you proceed? I'm not worried about getting in trouble. I didn't do I'll just be up front with you. We got Cody's phone. The one that shows your phone number and your address and the communications between you two. Like, I have it. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just laying it out for you because... That's when I met up with somebody doesn't mean that I went with them to go do something. This seemingly plain statement actually carries more weight to it than you might realize. The detective presented David with a piece of concrete evidence that he's saying puts him dead to rights, to which he responds by confirming he had indeed met with Cody, but it went no further than that. Again, it seems like nothing, but now that detectives know this tactic works on David, they can attempt to use the wealth of other evidence they have to slowly extract a full confession from him. What's that Dave, Dave Chappelle little uh, quick clip go? Gotcha! <laughs> <laughs> he got you right there, bro. Okay. So, when did you meet up with Cody then? <laughs> One, two o'clock in the morning, something like that. On what day? Maybe Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Where did you meet up with him? Uh, over by my house. Okay. And who was with him? That I don't know. Was he alone? When I met up with him, yes. So, why did you meet up with the dude that you didn't know? because my friend Chris had asked me to. Okay, and so what happened after that? Well, he had tried to proposition me for a handgun. Mm -hmm. and I told him I didn't have one. Okay. So. Did he say why? No. So you guys meet up, you have this conversation, then what happens? He leaves. And how did he leave? Well, I walked back to my house and he walked back to whatever vehicle he was in. Okay. Why did you leave that out when we first started talking? You think that might be important that the guy under arrest for murder came to your house looking for a gun? Well, if I had given him a gun, then I think that that would be important. Well, it shows his intent. I mean, of course it's relevant to the case, right? People buy guns for all sorts of reasons, though. Yeah, but in this instance, there was a murder. So, they went on their way, just the Cody dude, and did you actually talk to the other guy in the car? How does he know who you are then? Maybe my name was mentioned when they were coming to meet me. But he didn't see you? Unless he saw me when he was parked. But you didn't see the car? I didn't look for the car. Unless I'm coming to meet somebody at their vehicle. I don't ask what vehicle they're in. Well, that's not... And, and again, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not trying to insult you, but that's not very smart. You're meeting somebody to sell guns, and you're not going to watch around you? to see where they come and go. It was sure. referred to me by somebody that. that I trust. Okay. I would still be on my six. So you clearly have a genuine distrust of the police. Is that fair to say? I distrust almost everybody. Being honest with you about the information that we have, trying to give you an opportunity. And I, I, I mean, you've already said flat out you don't believe that, that he has that information, but I mean, with everything he's told you, you have to know that what he's telling you is true. Well, whatever you have, you've got from people that may not necessarily be giving you information for the best of reasons, so. Take the people out of this. Take them out. Who cares about the people? We've got other stuff. Communications and all those types of things. The video. So it's not just that people are telling us this. We're not relying 100% on people. If we did that, we'd be stupid, right? I like to think I'm not that dumb. You take a totality of everything that we have, and we know you're involved. And for you to sit here and just say that you, you don't have anything to do with it doesn't make any sense. I think that you guys have me confused with somebody else. This interview has now been going on for over 40 minutes, and almost no progress has been made. Forcing him into a corner with evidence doesn't seem to be working. I think he's trying to be smart. He doesn't come off as as that, because if that was the case, then I don't think he would have spoke the entire interrogation. That's 101. Like, if you feel... Oh, lawyer. 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 Every, question, every answer out of your mouth would have been lawyer. But the fact that you sit here and think that you're going to be able to outsmart two brains that have been doing this and have trained highly interrogations, tactics and stuff like that. You think you could sit here and just out? No, no, bro. Many have tried and many have failed. Trust me, the success rate is a lot lower 
than the, <laughs> you know what I mean? For people trying to get over on the cop, it's low. And neither does running through the events of the night or even explaining why what he's doing is a bad idea for him. So instead, the detectives almost completely switch up and begin to threaten him with the consequences of his actions on his own friends. Dude, you're not this guy. You know you're not this guy. If you were, this conversation would be different. Yeah, I'm obviously not this guy. I I'm meant, telling you I meant the that is letting everybody else go down for him. I meant that type of guy. Ooh. That's not you. Ooh. You have a reputation as being a stand-up dude. Ooh. I think that whatever those guys did, if it leads to you believing that they were accomplices and accessories and everything like that, yeah, would be their own fault if they fucking hang for it. Really? Even though, hypothetically, you're the person who pulled the trigger? So even though somebody else pulls the trigger, you're good with those guys going down. Your homie Chris, you're good with him going down. And I get it, you know what I mean? Allegiance to these other two dudes. I understand that. But you're good with Chris going down. Getting 20 years off of what you did. You're good with that? If you guys have him orchestrating and setting up something like this, and that's an awesome guy. It's his own fault that you shot somebody. It's his own fault. That you and I guarantee you, Chris thinks they were friends. Oh, that's my boy. He ain't gonna. Your boy in there hanging you to dry right now, trying to let this play out as if you're it was it was you and he don't know what's going on, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's why my circle is super small. Not that I commit crimes or anything like that. I don't commit no crimes, bro. I don't want no no problems, no issues, no none of that. I don't want it because I got a family to take care of, bro. You know what I'm saying? But who you choose is your. <laughs> Fam, bro. You didn't do things the right way. That's his fault. I ain't shoot nobody. He should put himself around better people. Okay. Oh my God. You know he's going to read this, right? The audacity. I mean, he's going to have disclosure. It's fine. I'd much rather not see my friend get in trouble. But if by you saying that you guys want me to tell you that I did something that I didn't do, Fair enough. I don't want you to tell me that you did something you didn't do. That's not what I want. I want you to admit to what you did do. Because it's not even a question that you did. It not. wasn't a question. You wouldn't be sitting here trying to get me to admit to something I didn't do. I would, because it's the right thing to do. You may not trust the police, but I don't want to jam up all these other dudes on a murder one charge for something you did. Because it's not right in my mind that other people go down for something that serious off of what somebody else did. So I do care about that. That's why I'm talking to you. No, well, you're talking to the wrong guy. You don't care about those dudes? I'm not saying I don't care about them. I'm saying that you're talking to the wrong guy because I didn't do that's not, And I think that- That's uh, not what innocent people say. Innocent people that actually give a f Yeah, no, I, you know how many people I've had in that chair, man? Thousands. I don't, you don't give a you don't give a f that's you like in, enjoy your time i don't care then i don't i don't have any uh hard feelings for you i'm just gonna move on to my next case i just want you to know this isn't about you this isn't personal like you can say you don't care but i actually think you do i think you're being so with that said so uh, you agree that uh there's nothing more to say right if you don't want to talk to me there isn't well i don't want to talk to somebody that's gonna keep on calling me a liar i have yet to call you a liar You've made the implication that I'm lying to you. Because you are. But there's a difference between calling someone a liar and then pointing out inaccuracies in their story. Ooh. There's a big difference. One Ooh. is disrespectful. The other is not. Uh, have I been disrespectful to you? Have I been disrespectful to you? Have I insulted you or, or come at you hard or done anything other than You called me a liar. Yes, you did. You were lying. I'm not lying. Do you not freely admit that you lied to me in this interview? Where did I lie to you? About meeting up with Cody about being home, not going out at all, and then now you periodically are going out, would you not concede the both of those things were lies? I don't go farther than a couple blocks from my house. On foot, to meet somebody very quickly and come back. Okay. That's not so, what you told me. That's, 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 not what you said. that's not what you said in the beginning, bro. That's what I said, IQ or not. You might have scored high on the test, fam, but you suck at this. <laughs>
You suck at this. I don't leave my house. I was home all weekend with my girlfriend. Right. It's on tape, man. There ain't no secret. I Dude, I've got to walk my dog. Of course I leave the house. Periodic. Okay. But as for did I go anywhere? So you were never at Casino in Evergreen, anywhere near there within three or four blocks Ooh. Saturday night. I just want, want to make sure that we have this done. Let's see. Something. How far is the Starbucks on Evergreen? This fool said, let's see. Let's see. That's, that's, you know what that means? Uh, I might have messed up. Let me see what I can do to kind of fix this. Which Starbucks? The one on 75th. Yeah, no, I'm not talking about that. Okay, yeah, then no, I wasn't. Okay. So you're at the Starbucks on 75th? Earlier in the evening, yeah. Like 8 or 9 o'clock, something like that. Well, that's not home. Could you lie to me? Can yeah. you get a, I don't even get a smile out of that one. I didn't, I didn't get you on that one. I feel like I got you on that Blatantly caught in a lie, it might not seem like it yet, but Ow. David is starting to get uncomfortable. If it's not been obvious throughout the whole the video, twisted. the only thing he cares about is his own ego. Yeah, I've been noticing his fingers twitching too. Them fingers been twitching and then they'll start momentarily, but then they'll go, they be twitching. I've been watching that the whole time. I ain't just said said it. So now that that's been damaged, he's immediately on the back foot and it's up to the detective to keep pushing and try to get him to move just that little bit further. Are you with someone? Yeah. Who? Another woman. Who's that? I'm not going to tell you that because she'd be very upset. Yeah, but it's a homicide. It can help prove that you weren't involved. How? Because if you're with her, right, that, that gets my timeline tighter. So you were with her from 8 to when? Not very long. So you Half wanna, hour at most. So you don't want to tell me who that is? I really don't. Okay. Were you in a car? You're on foot? I rode my bicycle. To 75th? Then how'd you get home? I got a ride from her with my bicycle in the back of her SUV. So there was a car. Can I get you there? I feel like I got you there too. Yeah, Saturday I appreciate night, it. I'm Sunday just looking morning. for honesty, man. I mean, at this point, I'm, I feel comfortable that you have lied to me several times. Yes. I'm looking for honesty so that I can rule you out. If you asked where I was Saturday night, Sunday morning. I did. Yeah. So Sunday morning, late Saturday night. Yeah. Doesn't cover eight or nine o'clock in the evening. Oh, okay. So then let's rewind. So Saturday morning to eight o'clock, where were you? Most of the time, at home. Can you just lay it out for me? Why do I gotta like pull it out of you? Like, just I'm asking where you were, man, so I can rule you out. For the first Ooh. time in it. Did he just wipe sweat from his brow? <laughs> hour he's been sat in the interrogation room, David moves his hand from his lap and adjusts his cap. His hands have also been moving around very slightly and he's been stuttering over his words. Yeah. His ego has yeah. been properly bruised and he's starting to get very uncomfortable. If provoked, narcissists such as David are likely to suddenly snap in an instinctive effort to prove that they are smart and in control, but often give up all the information the cops need to catch them dead to rights. So the detective keeps up his no-nonsense direct questions to try and get him to crack. The only places that I go, usually, I go to 7-Eleven, okay. the little Asian market if, you know, we need tubes and tobacco for rolling cigarettes, but that's... Not very often. Okay. Walgreens. Yeah. But Saturday, did you go to those places? I don't need to know where you generally go. I need to know where you went Saturday. I probably went to 7-Eleven at some point. Any idea what time? I go when I need something or want something. I understand, but that's why I'm asking. Like, any time? Do you remember wanting or needing something on Saturday? No, I don't, because I don't feel like I need to track every one of my movements and shit like that because I don't need to have a locked tight schedule of what I'm doing and where I'm going. As long as I'm a DOC on Thursdays between 1 and 3 mm -hmm. and I make my appointments with ideal options, then it doesn't seem like a big deal to me where I go. Okay, unless you're being charged with murder, then it kind of is a big deal, right? Yeah, but if I don't pay attention to and keep track of these things, how the fuck am I going to tell you where I was without lying to you then because I don't know exactly when I was there. Well, you could at least try. Yeah, yeah, I would try. If, if it can rule you out as a suspect in a homicide, I would try. Yeah, well, where I was Saturday during the day, 
has no bearing on where I was Saturday night, Sunday morning. It does. Absolutely it does. What? Because I can show you. Again, they're saying this dude has a high IQ for whatever reason. I'm just not seeing it. <laughs> We're in different clothes. Or I can show you wearing the same clothes. Right? That's pretty important. Do you agree? I can show that you were with somebody else and not with these people. People change their clothes. People meet other people. Oh, no, no question. But if I'm chipping away at that timeline, right, it can be exculpatory for you, meaning that it excludes you as a suspect. I know, my vernacular is very good. Sweet. So, you don't have to explain your words. Vernacular. Spectacular. But you, you can act like you're uh, upset about that, you're not. So, let's move past it. In fact, that you're talking to me like I'm a child. You're not, I'm, I'm not talking liar, to you like a child. What did I, how did I talk to you like a child? Tell me when. I you think have I've been to explain a word that you're using to me. Most people don't know what that word means. I apologize. Most people are f***ing idiots. Okay, you can pretend you're getting upset about it, but you're really not. No, I'm what I'm getting upset about is you call me a liar. Because you lied. You lied. And I don't actually think I called you a liar. I did say you lied, but I didn't think I actually called you a liar. So I'll call it to you now so we can just move past it. You are a liar. You have lied. Do you want to tell me what happened or not? Couldn't tell you because I don't know. Fair enough. We'll end up close the tape out for you, right, man? Should have done that a long time ago when I said the conversation was over. Oh, okay. Whatever you say, partner. And so it seems the conversation truly was over, as from then on, David refused to even say another word, choosing not to exercise his per That's a little late for that, bro. perfect vernacular anymore. And predictably, he didn't last long in court. Given that he made no attempt to defend himself or cooperate with detectives, he was faced with the maximum possible sentence. David was also already a convicted felon with charges of arson, burglary, vehicle theft, and 35 five other misdemeanors dating all the way back to 1999. So in October of 2020, 33 year old David Wright was sentenced to 40 years in prison without the possibility of parole. Whoa, fam, you don't, that, I think that's disrespectful to call it a history, what you have, you know what I mean? A rap sheet, I think that's disrespectful to call it that. I don't even know what to label that as, bro. You had some, like, goodness gracious, man. I don't know the word. I don't know the word. Jeez, I ain't never seen 35 misdemeanors plus other things dating all the way back to 1999. What made you think somebody was going to believe you? Even if you was telling the truth with your history, people are, it's going to be hard for people to believe you. Just like your parents would tell you, if you have a history of lying, that one time when you do tell the truth, it's not going to mean much because people are still going to think you're lying because of your history. And his? Wow. Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought of this one. I'm gone.